So we can use tractography to ask, for example, is the long-range connectivity of the fusiform face area distinct from the long-range connectivity of its neighbors? In other words, on this idea that that patch of cortex gets wired up to be a face area, somehow because of the connectivity to that region, to other parts, to and from that region, to other parts of the brain, um, then we should predict that that region should have different connectivity than neighboring cortex, right? Otherwise, connectivity isn't enough of a signature to tell us where to put a face area. Question is, do these connectivity fingerprints predict the location of functional regions? First, in adults, okay? If it, we don't see it in adults, then the jig's up. So let's start with adults. Okay, so the way that you can do this is for each voxel in the brain, this is a big one so you can see it. It would actually be a couple millimeters, wouldn't show on this picture. What you do is you follow that tractography and you say, oh, it went there and it goes there and it goes there, okay? And you tally how often when you start here, you land in each of a bunch of different big anatomical chunks of brain. That gives you a description of the connectivity fingerprint of that voxel. How strong is its connection? to each of these other remote regions in the brain. Okay, that's what I mean by a connectivity fingerprint. So now the question is, can you use this connectivity fingerprint to, um, to, to predict what the function of that voxel is? That is, is the connectivity distinctive enough that just based on diffusion data, we could say, what does that voxel do? If the fusiform face area has a whole distinctive connectivity fingerprint, then we should be able to predict it. Does this make sense? Okay, so that's the question. And there's a lot of math, which I'll skip. I'll just give you the gist, okay? So what we're trying to figure out is, is the fusiform face area distinct from its neighbors in its long range connectivity? That's the question. Okay, and in fact, it is. And we can show that. Again, I'm skipping over some details, but here uh, is a recently published paper that shows you in ways that should be familiar now. This is functional MRI uh, activation for faces versus objects. Fusiform face area, that's probably occipital face area, another region we'll talk about later, the face patches, the usual face patches. Again, in, this is an inflated brain, so the dark bits are the bits that used to be folded up inside a sulcus until they were mathematically inflated, okay? So that's the standard thing we've been looking at. This is the prediction based on diffusion tractography alone in the same subject about where the face patches should be. So very, very roughly what you do is you take some other subjects and you train them up on connectivity fingerprints. It's kind of like MVPA, but you train from diffusion data um, and you try to predict face selectivity. And then you take the diffusion data from a new subject and you predict where that face selectivity should be. And there's where it's predicted for the same subject. And it's pretty damn good. The key idea is, is there a systematic relationship between long-range connectivity of a voxel and its function, its selectivity? And this says yes for faces. Okay, so that's the case for faces. That tells us that in adults, those face regions have distinct um, connectivity. This is the same thing, I just shrunk it so I could fit in other stuff. Here is doing the same thing for scenes. Functional selectivity, PPA, RSC, um, functional selectivity for scenes measured with functional MRI, predicted functional pattern from the same subject with just tractography alone. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Now I was dissing diffusion. You might be thinking, okay, I was dissing diffusion tractography. It sucks. It has all these problems. It has all these ambiguities. So how could it work so well? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I think in part it's because you're predicting based on all of these different connections. So even if half of them are wrong, you can still get some predictive power out of it. That's just my guess, okay? Okay, so it works pretty well for scenes and it works pretty well for body selectivity as well. Functional MRI, prediction from connectivity, okay? So that's cool. Um, so that says the, these all have distinct connectivity fingerprints, but now these are all, this is all done in adults. 